It's good to be here, y'all. Could have been at the mall. Could have been still in the bed. But I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. For we, where we come to glorify him, where we come to exalt his name and lift him up together. And I'm glad that you're here today. I'm glad that you're here in the space today. And I'm glad that, uh, that you're joining us virtually as we prepare to hear what thus says the Lord. And the Lord has put on my heart this morning. I'm, as always, I'm honored to stand before you on this beautiful day. Uh, I simply count myself not worthy of this amazing opportunity. And I thank God for you each and every day today. And I want to remind you that this month we were focusing on bringing cancer awareness. So you heard the testimonies. But I will remind you that there are other testimonies that we have loaded up into our face our YouTube channels. Uh, so please, uh, I encourage you to go to the Antioch YouTube channel and listen to some of the other testimonies of the victorious things that God is doing uh, in the lives of each and every one of us. Uh, because our testimonies draw people in. It lets people know about the power of the Lord. It encourages each other of us, each of us. So I encourage you to do that as, as we now are at the point where we're at this fifth Sunday here in the month of October preparing to, uh, you know, do our last theme uh, this last day here, if you will, on my testimonies. And uh, I'm going to be sharing a little bit more about that here in a few moments, if you will. I want to briefly go ahead and uh, go ahead and get to our text this morning, because as you often heard me say, I don't plan to be before you long, but I'd rather preach it long than to preach it wrong. I thought somebody was going to say amen. <laughs> Let us go to 2 Timothy uh, the uh, first chapter, Second Timothy, the uh, first chapter, and we're going to begin reading at the fifth verse. Once again, please feel free to uh, open up your electronic devices or grab a hard copy uh, Bible there in the pew as we turn to Second Timothy, uh, the first chapter, beginning at the uh, fifth verse. If you if you have it, say Amen. If you look there, you'll find these words. I am, remind, I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I, mind, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear. All right, somebody heard me up in here but of power and love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who abolished death, brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do, but I'm not ashamed. Somebody say, I'm not ashamed. For I know, who I, am, I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and to the doing of his holy word. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Our dear God, we thank you now. We praise you, we glorify you, we lift you up. We thank you for this moment in time that you have allowed us to ride here, Lord God, to hear a word from on high. I pray now, Lord God, that you would remove anything that hinders us from receiving the word today, Lord God. 
And as always, God, we'd ask that you would save the unsaved, lift up the downtrodden, and encourage the discouraged, Lord God. And we'd be so careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. It is in Christ's magnificent name we pray. Amen and amen. I'm just going to go ahead and do the spoiler alert for the subject this morning right out the gate. And my subject this morning is, we are not ashamed of the gospel. And as I was working on a subject, I wanted to make sure it was not just reflective of me, but we as a church. And that's why I landed on the subject of we are not ashamed of the gospel. There are a lot of things going on in this world, but I tell you, it's nothing like, nothing like lifting up the name of Jesus. And so we find ourselves here in 2 Timothy, and I want to give you a quick backdrop of where we are here in the text before we move forward. And in, this, in, in 2 Timothy, you will see that Paul is uh, writing this letter to Timothy, encouraging him to stay faithful to the ministry. According to the King James Study Bible, it is a special interest not only because of what he reveals concerning the last days of Paul's life, but also by what is revealed to the recipients of this letter. In a very real way, this epistle kind of represents Paul's last will and testament. Paul used this letter to, to deliver exaltation in the faith and to stay committed to our walk in Christ. And that's a quick summation an overview of 2 Timothy. But as we began to look at the text for today, I want us to think about how we transition from our testimonies and, and how we live out this Christian life and how we are not to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I believe that as a part of this, one of the greatest enemies to our faith is fear. Let me say that again. I believe that there are many enemies to attack our faith, but I believe one of the greatest enemy is fear. Fear can cause us to not move forward. Fear can cause you to think that where you were is the best place to be. Fear can cause what I like to say is paralysis analysis. Fear can cause us to make decisions that are simply not grounded in faith. And that's why I believe Paul really says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a love, power, and self-control. Let me tell you something about fear. It, it, it's just, it, it's no joke. It will come at you all the time, anywhere, no matter where you are, fear can overtake your life. I want to go back to a time in my life where my daughter and I, we used to plan uh, an annual father and daughter trip. And one day she said, hey, Dad, uh, for this year, let's go to Universal Studios. I said, great, let's go to Universal Studios. No big deal. Let's do this. And in my mind, I was going to go to Universal Studios, and I was going to find me a nice bench to sit on. And I was going to get me some ice cream or one of those big expensive desserts, and I was going to be able to sit there and watch her do all the rides, just keeping security, if you will. But then she said something that threw me for a loop. She said, I want you to get on the roller coaster with me. And I'm going to just tell you, ain't no shame in my game. I got great fear of roller coasters. And so as, as, the, as the day got closer to getting to Universal Studios, and she was all excited, and there I was, the father saying, I can't show no fear. I'm a man. I can't show no fear. <laughs> and, and, and as the day got there, she said, hey, I want to show this YouTube video of the ride we're going to be on. <laughs> and I saw the ride, and my fear got magnified <laughs> all the more because my mind began to think about all the things that could go wrong. So we get there, and it just so happened we happened to arrive early for some reason, and we arrive early, and, and, and I'm praying, Lord, let the line be long. 
Lord, let the ride be shut down for maintenance, if you will. Because I got this fear about getting on the roller coaster. And we get there. And we get up to the ride and we are the first ones in line. <laughs> and more fear crept in. And when I, I, got, I got on the ride, I don't know if I closed my eyes or if I passed out. <laughs> but when I got off the ride, I began to say, thank you, Lord, you got me through. Because the fear had overcome me in that moment. I was thinking about all the things that were, could go wrong. And that's where fear can land us sometimes. We'll think about the worst outcome in life. Trusting in God that he'll get us through it. And when we get through that fear, we've got to learn how to praise God. Uh, I'm reminded of the Bible, that says, the verse that says, Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to fear any of evil. For, for God is with me. So I stopped by to remind you this morning that fear, it is a liar. Fear is a liar to try to tell you that life is not going to work out the way you want it to work out. Fear will try to tell you that Jesus is not on your side. Fear, it is a liar. I refuse to let fear control my life any longer because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. You, you, you know, fear, it, 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 I'm reminded of the story as they got to the Red Sea. Fear overcame them, and they thought it was better to go back in slavery. Oh, help me out this morning. That's what fear will tell you if you allow it to sink into your, line, into your life. But fear, it is a liar. Uh, I'm reminded of the songwriter that says, fear is not my future. God is. Sickness is not my story. God is. Heartbreak is not my story. God is. Fear, it is a liar. It has no place in our Christian journey. I now want to uh, move forward and talk about what Paul says. Paul says, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that before the Lord came into my life, I was an emotional wreck tangled up in past hurts and regrets, made bad decisions, said bad things. I know what God has done for me. So I'm not ashamed to let you know that I'm a flawed man. But in those flaws, God can still use each one of us. There is no shame in my testimony because I believe that God can use all of us if we trust in his word, there should be no shame in our testimony. I would like to think that if they were to drag me before the court and give me that oath that says what you're about to testify is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I'd like to think to say, yes, it's the truth the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and that God has been good to me. My life is a living testimony of how good God can be in our life. For when we think that we are worthless, God can make something out of us. Testimony, my, my testimony is I didn't see where God was sending me, but when I pushed past the fear, and let God use, he can use you in some amazing ways. We are not ashamed of the gospel. I want to reflect back on last Sunday, and maybe some of you caught it, and maybe you didn't, and then you'll watch the video. But I was watching the young people up here. And one of the things that I noticed uh, through several or many of the young people was some of the words that they had on the T-shirt. 
And they were talking about Jesus. They were showing about being blessed because they were not ashamed to put that on to let people know that they're representing Christ. The author goes a little farther and he says, Paul tells Timothy to guard the good deposits that are entrusted to you. You know, when I hear the term guard and deposit, what comes to mind? Who's taking care of my money? Oh, hold on, let me back up for a second. So what I mean by that is, don't think I'm taking this text out of context. But when I hear the term guard and deposit, I begin to think about the money that I, uh, that I have in the bank account. I want to protect that financial resources that God has blessed me to have. I'll create the most complicated password. I'll, I'll try to find a bank that's FDIC insured. I'll, I'll, I'll enable two-factor authentication to make sure that what's deposited doesn't come out of there without my approval. Oh, somebody, somebody know where I'm going. So what God has put in you, you got to guard it. You got to protect it. You got to put a password or a prayer on it so the enemy cannot come in and take it unaware. That is the treasure that God has placed in our lives. So whatever God has placed in your life, just as Paul was telling Timothy to guard it, you got to make sure you guard it. Whether it's your family, your friend, your community, your relationships, guard all of that with the word of God. Because we are not ashamed of the gospel. Well, what does all this mean when you look at the application piece of we are not ashamed of the gospel. Well, I believe it relates to us in this form or fashion. I believe that people will rather see a testimony than hear one. Let me say that again. Sometimes it's not about the words that we say. It's about the life that we live. Because everybody can talk a good talk. But not everybody can live up to the standards of what God has called us to do. So if, if, if during this month you didn't stand here and give a testimony, I want to encourage you to keep on living the life and let your life be the testimony that people see. Because when, when people see your life, it will change their life. When, 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 when we see Sister Ella Roberts at the end of her video give God the praise, even though some difficult circumstances, that's a living testimony. When, 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 when people see us go through things and we do not give up our faith or we do not turn our back on God, that's a living testimony that says, I am not ashamed or we are not ashamed of the gospel. For it's that gospel that changes hearts, changes minds, and it changes our direction in life. We are not ashamed of the gospel. I know for a fact that we are here at Antioch, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> the psalmist says it this way. I trust in God I trust, I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? This is an awesome testimony of the power of trusting in God. So as we look to trust in God, know that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And as you go to work, as you go to your social event, as you talk to your family and friends, let them know that you are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I surmise that the reason that I'm here is because of testimony of our soul of other people. The testimonies of the saints of old, the testimony of the deacons and the deaconess, 
the old church mother, that old country preacher, that testimony changed my life because they were not ashamed of the gospel. And that's where we are, and that's where we serve. Come, let's give God a hand, praise.